Hey guys, it's Marianne from Thrive. And today I'm just going to give you a really quick introduction to tables in Microsoft Excel. So tables are a way of grouping related sets of data in a way that links them so that you can do lots of formatting and filtering, but also sets you up for if you want to work with charts and pivot tables and do more complicated functions and nested functions. It's really a useful way to group the data so that you've got a range of cells that you can refer to as opposed to individual cells or multiple cells. So for this example, I am working on my uh, on this stock list spreadsheet that I've made up completely. So please don't come at me about the prices and the numbers. And we're going to be working in Excel on the desktop on a Mac in this instance. But if you are working on a PC, then this will work exactly the same. And the functionality of tables is available both on desktop and the web. Now, the first thing that we need to do is actually tell Excel which data is related. Now, you've got two options here. If you don't have, if you're starting from a blank sheet, you don't have any data yet, you can pick a table and then fill it, or you can take existing data and you can turn it into a table. And that's what we're going to do here. So I've got this stock list. And I'm actually going to do, I want to know, so you can tell, or you may not be able to tell from looking at it, but this is the produce. This is a barcode or a, an item code, produce code. This is the price per kilo. This is the number of kilos that we have in stock. And I'm doing air quotes there. And then here, what I want to do is work out the value of the stock. Okay. But I haven't done that yet. So the table that I want to create actually needs to encompass column E as well, because it is a column that doesn't have data in it yet, but I will be using and it will be related to this, this data. So I select the whole section. And then what I do is I go insert and table. So we've got pivot tables, and then I just want a regular table at this stage. And you can see here, it's asking me where that data is. So if I wanted to, I can draw this down and I can change any of the sections that we've got. I can add some extra spaces at the end. So I might do that as well. And if I already had headers on the, had set up headings for each column, then it I would tick that and it what it would do is it would drop that down, but I don't. So we'll leave that. And this is what it does. It transforms the set of cells that I've recommended. You can see this is the edge of the table here, but I can draw it out at any time. So I can make it smaller and I can make it bigger. Now, um, what it's done is it's given me a column heading. So if I click anywhere in this section, you'll see that the table tab appears on my, on my ribbon and I've now got all of these extra functions. This is where I can do some of my formatting. This will be based on the style that you have set up. So I might decide I want it to be this one. I might decide I want it to be this one, or this one. So it's entirely up to you. Here, I can now also rename my columns. So Let's go back to something fairly sensible. So we've got produce, item code. We've got um, dollars per kg. We've got um, kg in stock. And here I want a stock value, okay, because that's what we're going to look at in a minute. So now I can still adjust these the way I would with anything in a normal Excel sheet. So none of that functionality has gone. I can move things around, I can cut and paste, that's not a problem. But what it's doing is it's telling Excel at the moment that A to E, 1 to 14, this or 15, sorry, this data all belongs together. And I could now refer to it as table one in any of my other functions or calculations. The other thing that I can do now is I can filter by any of these things. So I could filter by uh, price, and I can filter by, um, I can move them into ascending order or descending order. So all of these sorts of features that you might normally do manually are now built in as a table. The other thing that I can do is, like I said, I want to work out my stock value. So I'm going to just put a, fun a formula in. I'm going to go equals kilogram uh, price per kilogram times kilograms in stock. And you can see when we look at the formula, it's actually saying it's not looking at the, the row that I'm doing. It's not doing C2, uh, yeah, C2 times D2. It's saying multiply whatever row is in here under dollars per kilogram against 
whatever uh, cell is underneath kilograms in stock. And it's what it's done is by that one calculation, it's multiplied them out for all of them. So if I was to pop something in here now, if I was to say, okay, well, we've now got um, tomatoes and I won't worry about a code for them at the moment. We're going to sell tomatoes at $3.45 a kilo just for random numbers. And we've currently got 15 kilograms. It's going to automatically work that out for me. I don't have to drag anything down. The formatting continues. The information is still there and I can go through and replicate it. Now I might decide that we've had a bunch of cherries in stock now, but we've had a new batch come in and they are also cherries, but they might have a different item code. So you can go cherries and um, I'm going to put them without an item code. These cherries are super plentiful and we're going to sell them a little bit cheaper. So we're going to sell these at um, $4.25 and um, we've got 35 kilos. Now what I can do is I can actually filter my data if I suddenly said, right, well, I just want cherries, please. So now I can see how many cherries I have. So if we had different types of cherries with different item codes or different varieties, I'd be able to see all the cherries in one fell swoop. So filtering and using the, the banded rows means that I can create an auto sum, I can total, I can, you can see here we've got things running in descending order. So a table is a way for you to group that data. If you haven't been working with, I'm going to clear these filters. If you haven't worked with, oh, I've just got that in descending order, there we go. So that's just going to put it back into the order it was before. So if you don't or haven't played with this before and you're spending a lot of time formatting a data to look pretty to be able to put it into another document or another piece of content as a table, again in air quotes, then have a look at working with tables. This is a really high level view. We haven't really done anything about what you can now do with a table, but this is the first stage where you're actually grouping the data and telling Excel that this all belongs together and it, it is related to each other. So get in there and have a play. And, um, and let me know how you go.